So now we're into the process of actually churning butter. We put the cream that's been standing for a couple weeks into the churn, and then this is called a dasher, and it has a dasher on the bottom of it that looks like this, oftentimes. Again, it's the shape of the cross um, for protection for the butter so that it doesn't go bad or it doesn't disappear. We don't want those huldra to get in trolls and um, spirits to get into this churn. And of course, when you let your <clears throat> cream sour a little bit, it's a lot faster for churning the butter. So going up and down like so with the dasher will actually separate <clears throat> the butter from the rest of the, the milk or the butter milk. Then once we get that nice creamy butter and we take that <clears throat> and we'll put this in this bowl. Now this bowl is used for washing butter because if we don't wash it, it's going to get rancid. And if it gets rancid, it's not going to last on the shelf. Because this butter up on the summer farm where it is made, um, maybe has to sit there for two, three weeks before the men come up to the center and pick it up and bring it down to the valley. If you remember, the butter is a high commodity. This is what they trade with and it's what they sell for either money or trading goods. And so it's important that they have this to bring to the markets during the summer as well. So the buttermilk that's left in the churn will probably be drank or it'll be used for cooking or it can make some other types of cheeses as well. We're going to use this paddle. We don't want to use our hands because the heat from the hands can melt that butter a little bit. So we use the paddle and we pour very cold water onto the top of the butter and we work the butter back and forth, working out that buttermilk like so, and back and back. This may take two, three, four washings before the water comes out clear. And after all the changings of water and the water is clear, then we can pack it in to our butter containers. Also, I want to mention that besides the butter paddle, we have these wooden paddles that actually have several grooves in them. And some people may see these at antique stores and wonder, well, what are they? What do you use them for? Well, the Norwegians, no matter how hard life was, they always had a way of decorating things, always trying to make something look good and beautiful. And they would do that with the butter. So they would take a little slice of butter, they would roll it into a ball over these lined pieces on the paddles, and that would form some nice butter balls put on the table with a nice groove on them or a pattern on them. I also want to talk about the um, setrientes or the budeas or the, the, the dairy maids. They had a lot of work to do and it was hard work. For instance, they'd have to save about 25, around 25 gallons of milk before they can start producing their butter or their cheese. Once they have saved this, um, and they're done churning, they need to wash up all of these wooden bowls. Now you don't have a kitchen to go to, to wash them, so you need to use nice cold water for both washing the butter and washing out the churns. Well, how far do they live from a stream or a river to get that really cold water? When they are washing the churn, they will rinse it out with cold water, then they will scald it with hot water, and they'll probably put some juniper branches if they're available in that hot water let it sit in the churn for a short time, empty it out, and then they'll put it in the sun so the sun can bleach out the wood. And um, they will do that as well with the wooden butter bowls, they'll do it with their milk containers, they'll do it with all of their items that they used for making the butter and the cheeses.